One minute. Jeremy Degler. I thought the three on the far side was going to be the Okay. I'll have to move him to old business. All right, it's 6.01 and the Conservation Commission meeting will come to order. First order of business is thank you to Jeremy Degler, who is not here yet. Um, I'll wait until he does come, because um, I don't want to praise him while he's not here. So we'll move on to the, the next item, which is welcome to David Nagy. Welcome. Um, let us know if you need anything. and. Uh, if you want to apply for a regular member, then we have an opening. So, and since Jeremy's not here, you're um, uh, you're able to vote. It might be him on the stairs, but we'll see. There he is. So, thank you, Jeremy Degler, for uh, for all of your help and um, all your hard work. Good luck to you. Thanks. And. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Going back. All right. So the next item of business is uh, the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. I don't have any comments on these. I'm sorry, I said do. Just a question. Um, paragraph B, uh, two thirds down the page, uh, where it says discussion of potential intermittent streams. I'm not sure of the wording of that one, where it says um, consensus was reached that attempts to modify this section of the property carry substantially more risk than potential benefit. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but that was the first thing that you heard that my uh, water flow there. We didn't have enough to really make a determination and posed risk to the site if we did attempt to do anything. Okay. My concern was uh, strictly to um, acknowledge the, the presence of the intermittent stream on mm -hmm. the plan. I'm putting note in for that. And that's all I have. I just have one on page four, up of the page. It says invasive plans subcommittee. Should that be plant or is plans correct? It should be plant. Correct. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? We have a motion. Make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. I second it. There's a motion and a second to accept the minutes as amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Next item is public comment. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to speak? See anyone? Um, the next item is conditional use permits. A 200 Main Street LLC is seeking a conditional use permit to modify existing developed land within the riparian and wetland buffer on a property located at 200 Main Street in the Mill Yard 
MY District Assessor's Map 09, Lot 282, CUP 02, 2024. Welcome. Untelevised? Yes. Yep. It's televised. Okay, yeah, so <clears throat> make sure the light is on. Please. Light is on. Okay. Uh, Paul Goodwin, I'm a Senior Project Manager with Schimberg Properties. Here with uh, Neil Raposa from Civil Consultants. Um, and we are obviously going to discuss the 200 Main Street project here with you. I'm just going to run through very high level programmatic um, and uh, sort of hist historical elements of the project. And then Neil can walk you through the more detailed technical aspects um, of what is before you this evening. Um, so the property was acquired by Chimberg um, in the early 2000s. Uh, since then, there has been three substantial fires um, on the property. Um, I provided you a, a photo that I think is actually very helpful of seeing what the historical condition of the site was. It was a fully developed uh, urban millyard site, um, former Great Falls Bleachery, a number of interconnected uh, buildings, um, only one small segment uh, of which is still standing, the foundations um, and uh, slabs and rubble uh, from those buildings are largely still on the site. Um, and you know, we're now moving forward with a proposal for uh, a new project, so, two, so effectively two buildings. So there's a new building um, closer to the river that uh, will have uh, all apartments in it, ground, uh, ground level parking under the building, um, and then behind it, um, we're keeping the last remaining historic segment of um, of the mill of the bleachery, and then attaching an addition to that um, with more apartments, and that will have the majority of our amenity spaces. The new addition will also have parking underneath um, the building on the ground level. Um, those are four-story structures. Um, in total, we're estimating about 145 apartments. Um, I would also note that this um, this site is in the urban exclusion zone exemption, yeah. urban urban exempt zone. Um, we are going through the AOT process. Neil can speak more to that. Um, but my understanding of the Summersworth regulations is that we do not have a carve out for urban exempt zones. So that's why we're before you this evening. Um, we just interject there. It, that's right. And um, on my part, when I drafted the um, uh, the, the ordinance, um, that was an oversight. So it, it's how it stands, but the intent was uh, to um, to include this. So thank no, you. No worries. We're, we're, we'll work through it. So um, so uh, Neil, as I said, we'll walk you through. I'll just flag one other thing because I know from my time on this for the planning board that this is something that um, we care about. Um, the planting plan uh, in front of you uh, includes primarily native species, but we also checked with the planning department based uh, uh, as recommended from our landscape architect uh, to include native adapted species, which are hybridized natives that are potentially better suited for urban um, growth and or landscaping. Um, so there's a slightly wider variety of plantings than you might see if we stuck to just the, the native species planting that um, was provided by the city. So with that, I will turn it over to Neil um, for more details. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Neil Raposa, Civil Consultants. Um, I think Paul did a good job uh, with a lot of the background information for the project. Um, as far as uh, the conditional use permit we're going for, it is just for our work within that 100 foot, um, 100 foot setback. Uh, for the most part, it's it's going to be less impact than um, has been on the site, uh, you know, in previous iterations of the development of, of this lot, uh, as is kind of seen in that that photo that Paul provided. Um, our current plans, uh, there is fairly minimal planting right up against that uh, that shoreline. I would like to have a stabilized vegetation. Um, without a lot of, of rooted rooted plants uh, up against that wall, there's currently a, um, a fairly large retaining wall that runs along along the riverbank there. So it's it's a it's a flat face um, right down to the water uh, all the way through the site until you get to the uh, location of the old steam plant, which is down kind of at the corner at the corner of our site there. Uh, there's 
no earthwork planned uh, anywhere beyond that retaining wall, uh, and that will be uh, more to stabilize it and to provide uh, a river walk at this point um, close closer to that wall uh, than the rest of the development there. Um, the access drive that kind of loops uh, closer to the wall uh, at the riverside, uh, that's, it was meant to mimic a, a, one of the drives that was there um, historically. Um, so we're trying to keep, trying to keep the coverages uh, at, the very, at the very most the same as they were before, but from what we can tell from the historical data, we're reducing it quite a bit um, with respect to what we're proposing now. Uh, we did perform a, a slopes analysis on there just to show that we're reducing the steep slopes within that 100 foot, uh, that 100 foot buffer. I have a blow up here. This is really just to show that we're going to be reducing that the amount of steep slopes that are coming down in that 100 foot buffer and uh, trying to mitigate that, uh, that, that fast flow that's going to be coming off those piles. Uh, historically, it's been a lot of large rubble piles and uh, kind of uh, not, not unknown but unconfined material that's been on this site. Uh, and with, uh, with the proposed development, it's going to be controlling everything uh, and you know, providing a more direct uh, route for the stormwater to go and get treated. And in that, in that vein, um, when we originally uh, began the conceptual process of planning this project, uh, I was under the assumption that we would be doing a fully redeveloped site and that the alteration of terrain permit would be uh, a, minimal, uh, a minimal impact as far as the design goes and the treatment. So we had planned to get you know, very small rain gardens kind of everywhere on the site to, to perform some treatment for us. Uh, as we discussed with the AOT, um, as of this past fall, uh, they got a new definition of redeveloped sites and the requirements for them. Uh, so we, we're we still showing several uh, small areas of, of planted rain gardens within, within the parking areas throughout the site, uh, but they're not our primary form of treatment for the runoff here. We're actually going to be uh, directing that after it gets that pretreatment from those uh, vegetated areas. And we're going to be using three of the flow through filtration devices uh, that will be maintained and, and kept up by the developer. Um, Can you highlight those for yep. us? <laughs> so if you're, if you're looking at your plan here, um, the first the first uh, treatment area is you will have um, a series of catch basins and pipes directing uh, flows to a, a jellyfish filter, which is uh, flow through. Uh, it's basically a four by six um, catch basin that uh, flows are directed to it, and then it flows up and through uh, several uh, treatment cartridges that are maintained, and that uh, removes the, the metals, uh, suspended solids, and all that to the to the DES's requirements. Um, and then that will be that will outlet um, through an existing sluiceway uh, directly into the into the river on that side. Um, the second one is down in the area of an existing catch basin um, that was uh, put in uh, historically to serve this portion and then run through uh, the rest of the lots to that existing 60-inch uh, culvert that empties out into the river uh, down off the page here, um, and that collects. This portion of that roadway, the building, and some of this overflow through here. What's that structure going to consist of? Also another another same jellyfish. Okay. Yep, we, we kept it consistent with all three of them, so it would be an easier maintenance uh, maintenance activity. Okay. And the third one is uh, located up near the entrance here, and this is where there's that, if you've been on the site, there's, there's a larger paved area that kind of bumps out here once you get through the entrance. And the second, and that third one will be sitting right in there, um, receiving water from the existing structures there, as well as the new ones intended to catch all our our entrance drive through there. Thank you. As far as 
other permitting. Uh, DES requires a sewer, a sewer permit for flows of this size coming into a municipal sewer. So that is in the works. Um, we just received word from um, sewer water that it is acceptable. Uh, the flows are gonna be acceptable and they have capacity for them. Um, beyond that, it's, it's a fairly simple project on the surface. Once you get down to the utilities and foundations and all that type of thing, it gets, it gets pretty complex. But as far as what we're trying to accomplish here, it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly self-evident how we're handling it. Thank you. Thanks. So the, um, regarding the drainage, uh, going back to the drainage again, um, I assume that the curbing and so forth isn't all intact. The existing, uh, whatever was there for for stormwater management. There's some is intact and some is not. Yeah. Uh, some of it is um, the main the main drain through the uh, from the city that comes down through uh, that portion of it. We've kind of segregated our our flows from and, and getting it treated prior to that, mm -hmm. and we're just allowing that uh, that main culvert that runs up through. There's a culvert that runs all the way up. The, uh, under the railroad tracks, and that's from way back when, when it was, when it was still um, I think Spring Street, or, or the street actually came all the way into our site. So uh, that's all going to be maintained as is. And the only portions that uh, we are not sure on the on the functionality of is this culvert coming through here, which is uh, most likely buried on our side. It was in a catch basin that was uh, filled with debris. When, when we went out to do the survey. Uh, so that would have to be cleaned out and pulled through. Okay, and um, along the river, will there be silt socks or? Yep, the, uh, the current, uh, current plan for that, and I did have an updated, um, updated demolition road control plan. because we noticed that one of the blocks had actually had actually uh, come through with a different reference so we have two of the same detail here um, but the, the details here are shown as uh, doing a uh, clay core erosion control berm uh, anywhere within uh, the riparian buffer uh, and then once you we get beyond that if there are spoils piles or anything like that what we've shown what we've indicated here is there'll be a double layer of a reinforced erosion control um, Rose control device uh, there, but just no, there's noted no silt fence is going to be within that, within that 100 feet to the river. So I'll ask Dale's question for her. Um, where will the snow removal be? <laughs> uh, the snow removal? Slated for uh, the portion here is the portion that's closest to the river, and that's um, that's intended to be kind of piled on where we have this extension of this drive. And then there is a catch basin here that we're uh, planning on having else go into that, and then that. Uh, so we're, we're trying to capture as much as we can without um, without getting it into the area that we're speaking. Of. Uh, there are portions of it that uh, that are in kind of the open spaces near the river. Again, uh, trying to keep those near uh, those close catch basins, get those into into those treatment devices. Uh, once you get up top, uh, and so the storage areas would be uh, kind of at the end of the driveway in here, parking areas. Uh, and then we are we do also plan on uh, being able to kind of wing snow to the edges of the parking lots that do not have the curbs. It's one of the reasons that we're asking that some of the parking areas don't have to have those curbs. So. Okay, and will it be regular salt and sand? We have a, a minimization for the salt and sand application within the stormwater maintenance uh, plan that we put together, uh, not the uh, pollution prevention uh, plan for erosion control 
during construction, but the, the actual maintenance during the operation of the of the development. So it's going to be less than less than a normal uh, salt and sand situation. After the construction is done. Correct. Um, yeah, I looked through the, um, the landscaping plan, and uh, the species all look good to me. I did have uh, one one thing that I flagged here was the ivory silk Japanese tree lilac. Um, that came out up on various sites with uh, uh, it's aggressive or invasive. Everything else was was good um, in fact it looked to me like it was good for um, uh, habitat as well we're happy to remove the that lilac and swap with the alternate I actually almost made him revise the plan when I saw that myself I was like just the name Japanese does Japanese. That need, to be, <laughs> need to be in here um, but uh, no, not a problem all right so to um, sort of frame this for everyone it, it looks to me like there's no work outside the existing footprint, right? Um, and um, the uh, you know, the reason that it's coming before us is because of the riparian buffer. There's no wetland involved, correct? So the concerns that we that we have, I guess, are, are uh, primarily erosion. Um, any and any changes that may make that worse um, and any recommendations that we might have to, to improve things don't have any questions or comments I did, did want to note that we uh, we are seeking the two waivers on this one uh, one of them was the high intensity soil survey just due to the nature of the site and the coverage and it's kind of been built up and knocked down several times uh, so we wouldn't really glean any new information out of that and also there is the requirement for the signs for the 100 foot buffer on this site I don't think it's going to make make too much of a difference as far as as far as preservation or, or, or protection goes so I think that one can be waived on this the entire thing is within the buffer yeah well yeah <laughs> everything that's in the buffer has been has been disturbed yeah. Less question and more a couple of comments. Um, I think you put together a very comprehensive plan. The fact that you've had immediate answers to every question that's been raised speaks to that. Um, to put it bluntly, this is kind of what I've come to expect from Jinberg, and I, I wish other builders held themselves to this kind of standard as well. Um, Scott called out the one thing on the landscape plan that I would as well. Turns out you were a little bit ahead of us on that one too, so glad to see that as well. Um, I think the level of erosion control that you're planning for the site during construction is excellent. Um, goes uh, to the level that we'd hope to see for a project along a river that's a, a major water source for the city. And the fact that you're also looking to minimize the salt sand impact on that once the site's up and running uh, speaks very highly of this as well. Um, can't say enough good about this and uh, looking forward to seeing you planning. So I, I would just echo that. I think I, we've I've been on the commission almost I don't know a year and a half or so, and and have never seen a packet like this. The the planting plan is awesome to see, and and like Scott mentioned, I, mean, I can see these sort of micro habitats for you know pollinator habitat, all this kind of stuff. Um, and so really, I just I'm, I'm just sort of curious of, of more than anything of when you go in to you know start restoring this and doing the building. I would assume there's a bunch of invasives on site and all that. So, like, you know, what are your steps in kind of mitigating that and resetting the site for these new, you know, habitats that you're going to be creating? I have a general idea, and then Neil might have a more specific idea. But we we did we did flag invasives as a major concern. The site is like 90% not weed right now. Um, and I, literally, if it's invasive and it does well in New Hampshire, it's on the site and doing just just fine. Um, and we obviously don't want that to um, you know come back and, and ruin all the work that we did or to spread it around. 
Um, we haven't gone to bid yet, but we typically work with Severino, which is a highly regarded site contractor um, who uh, has a lot of experience doing um, working with you know, all types of soil conditions and invasives. So I suspect we'll be able to come up with a plan with them and Neil to, uh, to make sure that we're disposing of those materials appropriately and um, uh, tamping down uh, them sufficiently during construction where they're not going to be a problem during uh, operating. But Neil, th th add anything if there's anything else. Yeah, no, I mean, generally it's, it's we do, we do a lot of work with the contractors to, to um, you know, kind of accommodate them as to how they want to handle it and what has worked in the past. Um, it's not really generally our purview to, to tell them how to, how to stamp things out like that. Uh, but for this one, uh, much of the material on site is, you know, literally rubble that would have to be either, you know, a, um, you know, a deeper fill or something that would have to be hauled off site. Um, for those portions of it, it's concrete and rock and things like that. Um, so it would be something that, um, that we'd have the we'd have the contractor be kind of corralling on site and dealing with it uh, as best they can on site for the removal and elimination of it. Um, it's like I said, we we haven't talked with the contractors yet because it just hadn't gone out to bid yet. Uh, but it's something that everyone's been cognizant of and 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 kind of been you know, top of mind as we talk about this initial this initial portion of clearing out the lot. So it's. Definitely hasn't been hasn't been overlooked. We'll put it that way. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. I'm planning budget for it. That's yeah. another way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is it possible? I, like you said, uh, you leave it to the contractor to do what they know is best. But just to leave whatever might be going to seed until the you know, after that. It, my, um, my guess is work won't start um, in a meaningful way until when. Like the dead of winter, so I don't know if that's a concern at that time of year. But um, I don't think any. Yeah, I'm hoping to be in the ground before spring, but it won't be during like the warm season here. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any motions? Yeah, I think this looks great. I'll make a motion to. Uh... To approve the conditional use permit as uh, as presented. What about say. the uh, the planting? Oh, with the removal of the uh, the Japanese lilac species. I would second that. More discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, new business. Election of a treasurer. Anyone interested? Comes with the folder. <laughs> it's a really nice folder. Do you want to like give a little brief of extent of what you had to do, um, just so that anyone that gets involved in it might know? Yeah, it's really simple. Um, just. Uh, I typically email Barbara Ross on the Monday before the uh, mission meeting, which I forgot to do this week. I apologize. Um, and then she'll email me back a, uh, a monthly report, and you just read that off. It's pretty simple. Um, if there's any grant issues that come up, there's some information here about grants and potential funding sources, but um, that never came up during my tenure. so. Anybody. And no embezzlement, right? Yeah, no, I didn't steal any money, so I didn't get rich <laughs> off of this position. But you are leaving quick. <laughs> Can people hold more than one position? I don't know about that. I don't think your rules of procedure talk to it, but typically, like, only one. You do have copies of your rules of procedure. Um, I finally remember to give those to you so apologies for the late um i think typically you want one person per position in case it was a plane crash you can't go down with all the knowledge <laughs> oh 
Well, we can hold off. I'll bear the burden for now. So I'll take that folder, please. Lunch holes too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, next item is NHACC and other training opportunities. And uh, I failed to prepare for that. I've got gotten some emails from them. Is anyone else on their mailing list? I am. Um... I recommend it because there are some really good opportunities that come up. Let's see if I have any in front of me. Say, say what the acronym was again? NHACC. The annual meeting is going to be coming up in a couple months. If uh, I know Scott and Dale have recent, uh, previously always gone to that. If other members are interested, please let us know. Typically, September, I believe. Yeah, you email me in October, usually about registration. Yeah, easement monitoring workshop for conservation commissioners is on the 23rd of this month from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Harris Center for Conservation Education in Hancock. Nice place. A little bit far, but maybe worth it. There's uh, funding available for interns. So, um, I'll send out the URL and, um, you know, at, at your pleasure, you can sign up for the emails <laughs> or, or not. And then I'll forward you the, whatever I find that uh, looks interesting. All right, the next item is grant opportunities. Um, ditto for that. Anyone else uh, find anything, Doug, for the inventory or Dale? The tree inventory. If you've stumbled on any any potential grant opportunities. Oh. All right. The next item is money for handbooks. Um, going back to NHACC, they provide, and I don't have one with me, I don't think. They provide handbooks for conservation commission members and they're very comprehensive. You wouldn't happen to have one with you. You do? Another yeah, couple hundred pages, yeah, I think. Yeah, this is the 2021. And they, they lay out the RSAs and our obligations and um, um, optional duties and there are all kinds of resources in there. I was, um, and they're $20 a piece, I just checked. I was hoping to get one for every member. Uh, what year is yours? 21. Okay, so there there have been some legislative updates since then. Um, is anyone interested in uh, allocating some funding for that? Get everybody a handbook? We would have to vote on it. So that would be like 100, 140. I'll make a motion that we allocate $140 of Conservation Commission funding for the purchase of handbooks. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, passes. Thank you. I will contact them. And um, She actually asked me today, and I'll have her send them out. Uh, all business easement monitoring. I haven't looked at the schedule since I sent it out. Let's see.
August, uh, Kevin, you and I are on the hook for reports for Mallee Farm and Mallee Farm 2. We've been there a bunch, so I think we can just put our heads together and draft that up. Do you, um, I've never seen the reports. Do you have an example of what, what's needed for those? Is there a, or does, maybe you sent that around, a template or something? Yeah, I'll send it. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then we've got on the 17th, uh, Jeremy Rhodes. Are you able to do that? Or that's um, Cameron Farms. I'm not sure about the um, the owner of that site. Typically, it's a good idea to give them a heads up before you, you go out there. Uh, so There's an HOA that owns their open their shared space. Oh, the HOA owns that? Yeah, right, Cameron Farms, the one that's off Salmon Falls? Mm -hmm. Give me two seconds. That's my updated spreadsheet. We could be involved still with it, though. Uh, maybe that's the old one. Oh, sorry, we might own that. Let me double check it. I was thinking of something else, apparently. So that is the current... Cameron Farms, map 53, lot 3U, is um, under a conservation easement deed. The Cameron Farms Homeowners Association is the property owner, yes. And we do do the monitoring. I can see if I have a contact for that. We don't necessarily always have a good contact for HOAs. Um, but if you come across one when you're out there. Okay. And uh, we've got Jeremy Degler um, accompanying you on that. Does anybody else want to accompany Jeremy? Okay. And uh, next up would be Sean and Jeremy Rhodes at uh, the Oaks on the 24th. That's the Oaks um, 98, 539. So there are two parcels there. Uh, let, me, let me know if you have questions about which one. So it's map number five on that one. All right. Next is old business, unless we have any other new business to bring up. Can we go back for a second on the easement monitoring? Yeah. The, um, I think what Jeremy was talking about before, the forms that it used, mm -hmm. if we can all get copies of that. And the other thing on the forms, it says map such and such. Well, where are those maps? The tax map. The city tax map, so it's uh, Access GIS. Oh, okay. Um, All right. I can send you a link for that too. Oh, I've got it. I can always help you if you have questions on things like that. If you have any trouble with any map lot or property owner information, feel yep. free to reach out to yep. me. Perfect. Thank you. I don't know if you've ever hovered over uh, a parcel, uh, the map number on the parcel. It'll it'll show you the. Um, what is it called? Patriot? Something. It, oh, like the CIA card or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. So the assessing information is attached to primarily all of the cards. Sometimes you do run into properties that the linking doesn't sync up for whatever issues. Um, you can either hover over it or when you search a property and you click on it, there is um, the Patriot final FY property card link that comes up under like with all the information or when you click on the parcel the property owner information does come up on it 
Um, typically, the most current information, which conservation properties don't typically change hands um, as much as regular property does, it's in the little blue box rather than the card. The cards only get updated about once a year just because of the push required for it, but the information in GIS is updated frequently. I can explain it further another time if you'd like to. It's kind of just <laughs> nuancy. Um, and, and once again, it's also helpful to look at the, the nature of the easement before you go out, see what's allowed there and, and what's not. Uh, and then look at previous reports to see what the status was um, so we can see what has changed since the last monitoring. All set, Doug. All right, old business. How do we get easement monitoring in your new business? Sorry about that. Um, any correspondence regarding old business? Member items, subcommittee items, and reports. Wildlife management plan for Lily Pond parcel. I don't have any update on that. Invasives plan subcommittee report. Dale Smith Kenyon. Well, when um, Doug and I went out to the cemetery this this week, um, there's, as you noted, a lot of invasives there. So I have to get my next um, step is to get in touch with Mike Babinski and see what the plan would be to get control of some of those things. There are some um, big swaths of bittersweet that were climbing up some of the oaks. Um, and then there were some that were just like around the bases that hadn't really started yet. So um, I, we didn't go in through deep enough to see some of the other items that were there. And then um, <clears throat> oh, Anthony, Valentine, I think his name is. He had text, had emailed you about, had Scott about um, the, some Japanese oh. knotweed. And um, he, I've talked to him since then. Um, uh, a resident. A resident, yep. yeah. On um, Winter uh, Street. On which? Winter Street, yes. So he's working on that, and it seems like he's got a good plan in place. Um, so uh, the, the background for that was that someone, and he's not sure who, um, I, I guess there was some utility work done there, um, mowed some knotweed onto his yard, and uh, it, it took hold. And um, I, I think two-thirds of his yard is covered in knotweed now. Yeah. So he reached out for help with that. And uh, Dale went out and took a look at it. <clears throat> So back to the cemetery, um, I had driven by, uh, the last couple times I, I drove by, I noticed some bush looking things that looked like possibly bittersweet. And so I went out and walked the, you know, all the avenues and, um, and took pictures of the significant stuff that I found. Talked with um, Mike Rubinsky and, um, sent out a, uh, a word doc with all those um, all those photos and some background for management um, it's a very large document so I, I couldn't email it um, I, I put it up on Google Drive if you're interested in seeing it let me know um, But it's for the, the cemetery is really in terms of so there are what four or five invasive species that I found. Um, there's the beginning of uh, barberry, there's um, uh, glossy buckthorn is, um, is taking hold in I don't know at least a handful of spots. Um, honeysuckle is is taking hold uh, i think that it was probably planted there intentionally and and um escaped from the initial um spots and in some in some places it's pushing down uh headstones 
Um, there's a pipe vine. I don't know if you've ever, you've ever walked in, in the uh, Forest Glade Cemetery. It's really nice and well landscaped. One of the places, it's a rotunda, or I'm not sure what you would call it, is uh, surrounded with this pipe vine. It's very large um, teardrop shaped leaves. Uh, and it, it pretty much walls off the whole, the whole structure. Um, and it's native, but it's escaped um, and caused quite a bit of damage to surrounding trees and um, probably not what the intent was for it. There's, uh, what else was there? The big one was, was bittersweet. Um, I didn't, you know, there was no, not that I could see any uh, knotweed, but bittersweet is rampant there um, to the point where it's not something that volunteers can go in and, and uh, take care of. It's probably going to need, um, you know, a budget item and uh, some professionals to go out and, and take care of it. The, um, the borders uh, are, are pretty much all, um, you know, you could, you could walk the, the edge of the, of the cemetery and not find one contiguous uh, yard that doesn't have bittersweet roots in it. And there are several trees that are already dead, uh, several more that are coming down. And that is strewn all over headstones. Uh, there are a couple tombs that are really nice old tombs that are completely draped in it. Um, it's, uh, you know, the roots on, on the, the um, bittersweet aren't as damaging generally as the glossy buckthorn, but over time it, it does break down the concrete and, and stone. So on that note, I was hoping to, and I floated this to, um, um, the city manager and, and to Mike Babinski to um, come up with a presentation for the city staff and maybe the uh, land use committees, um, potentially the SAU for um, invasive identification and management. It's, uh, you know, it's gotten pretty pretty far ahead, you know, ahead of the city and we're going to have, you know, an ounce of prevention sort of thing is, is better than a pound of cure. Um, we're, we're at, you know, we're way past the uh, prevention state. So um, I think it would be in order. So Dale and I can look at, into that and maybe get cooperative extension to help with it or so anything else on the invasives no that's all I had at the, at the moment oh cemetery trustees need to be involved as well Exploration of formal conservation of Mallee Farm, city parcel. I don't have any updates. Uh, there's a few. So uh, we have been floated a draft conservation easement from Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, I, this kind of brings up a, I don't know if it's a question or a point, but something that I think we have to kind of figure out who needs to see what, you know, because it gets... You know, some of these things uh, probably need to be or definitely need to be reviewed by um, city folks outside of, you know, the commission. And I've noticed we've got like a couple different email lists going around, you know, with some people attached. So maybe I can get with you, Dana, and we can um, narrow down who needs what from the city side. And then I'll work with um, Julia at U.S. Fish and Wildlife and... Uh, Lori at Salt to make sure we have the, the matching, you know, that we all are on what needs to be on. 
Um, so there's that. There's been some discussion of grant opportunities. I think we're going to miss the moose plate, uh, but there's another one that Lori is suggesting that would be, I think, like a $10,000 uh, maximum if we were to get it, but those costs can go towards um, some of the, uh, or I think the costs can go towards some of the, the, the uh, what needs to be done to, to formally push this into easement. So uh, I've got to read up on that more. And I think that the, the, the date for that was sometime, the due date was more in November than, than September for the moose plate. And then um, I don't know, Dana, there was another recent email about if the, if the property assessment came back lower than expected, if we would still be interested in putting that into easement. So that's kind of beyond what I'm. I circulated that to Michelle, um, and I don't have a response on that okay. question at this time. Yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> either. I, it seems like it wouldn't matter, but I don't. I, we already, I, I, don't know. I, I don't know the nature behind it really. Yeah. So I don't have anything to expand on that okay. but i did circulate that to michelle okay she, i All don't right. think she was on that one maybe i'll wait till next week and i'll follow up yeah or, okay uh let's see so so i think i mean you know things are moving slowly on that and um hopefully you know over the winter we'll get something locked down when you said that we missed the opportunity for the moose plate um <laughs> We haven't missed it, but when you consider the steps that need to be done, before, you know, to get the grant in, we I don't think we could pull it off because it has to get approved for match and all of that. <laughs> so I, I can't see writing something and, you know, pushing it through. Well, I also... This may span another year. I mean, is it possible that we could apply in the next cycle? No, that's what I was about to say, too. I, I almost think it's better, like, let's get... You know, if, if this other pot of money helps with costs for, you know, um, designating or, or getting the easement in place, then that might be worth trying to go for this year. But I agree. I mean, the moose plate stuff, like, let's let's lock everything down and then, you know, work it through every pathway that it needs to in the city, uh, get approval, and then we can go for management money and, and come up with plans then. So. So I, that's it for, for what I have on that, I think. Questions on that? Thank you. All right, City Tree GPS Inventory Project, Doug Breyer. Uh, as Dale said, we started to take a look at the cemetery, uh, I guess it was yesterday. Um, we knew it was going to be a project, but it is going to be a very large project. The What we found in the short time we were there, uh, especially with the invasives, was uh, incredible. I mean, they're taking over that place. Uh, we also found issues where it looks like people have come in and planted trees for their loved ones, uh, but where they've planted them doesn't make any sense because they're planting oak trees and in between two headstones that's you know 50 60 years from now it's not gonna not gonna be well, there or, yeah but it's also possible that birds have have landed there no no this is in a bucket it's in a bucket it's well, in a bucket I haven't done that yeah but I did notice though on that line that um, you know under the cedars especially mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, the buckthorn under the cedars um, and a lot, you know, a lot at the headstones themselves. Right. That's, you know, probably just where the birds are perching and that's yeah, where we most did, of it's spreading. There are uh, several ornamental tree slash bushes that people have planted uh, that have grown beyond proportion. And at, uh, one of them we looked at yesterday, they're actually to the point where the roots and everything have started tipping the headstones over. Right. So it's... I don't know if that's the city's maintenance or is that the family's maintenance who may have planted them or but well um I've got an email from Courtney de Olivier Oliviera Valares. You're not gonna help me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney from Public Works. Courtney. Uh 
inviting me to go out with Mike and uh, and take a look. So if either or both of you are interested, um, we can look at it together. Yeah, what I, <clears throat> excuse me, what I plan to do is I, um, I hadn't really been in the cemetery before. So when we went in, uh, it apparently is set up on, I guess what they call, they're calling avenues. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple avenues that wind around and, and I, I, that's how we're going to have to document these, these trees. Uh, so I have to get in touch with the uh, trustees to see if there is a map of those avenues per se just so we can basically tell what we've done what we need to do yep type of thing um, the trees we're seeing out there are, are amazing I mean some of these things are a hundred feet tall and have been there for a hundred years so yeah um, like I say it's gonna be a, a big project so Courtney may be a resource for you regarding maps public works may have, may have that been. information as well if you want to connect with her yep. regarding um, that information. Okay, very good. I won't ask you to spell the last name. <laughs> you can find her on the website. <laughs> it's a very long last name. Yep. Um, yeah, that's about all I've got. So regarding those trees, uh, aside from the inventory, I, I think, um, you know, before a good management plan gets in place for the invasives, um, we ought to at least cut the um, the better suite at the at the bases um, of the especially the cedars that are all you know yep. poised to be taken over. Yeah, I would want to I would want to run that by the trustees before we just go out and start hacking <laughs> bittersweet. <laughs> yeah, well, right. We would leave it in place. Just just snip it at the base right, so right. that it dies. But if they see you out there with you know cutting right. tools, they might. Well, Mike works with them, so yeah. it will help. All right, so I will copy you guys on that. Anything else? No. So we've got, what, Green Street, what's it done? Oh, God. Um, pretty much Green Street. I've got a little bit left of Main Street to do. I did Washington Street last week, uh, the apartments up there in Washington Street. Uh, I think a couple of the, oh, the uh, Idlehurst Elementary is done. Still got to do the high school. Uh, see the school by the cemetery. Uh, Maplewood? I'm thinking right now, based on what we saw at the cemetery, that I might concentrate on these streets that are left. There's not a hell of a lot left to do because, like I say, it's going to be uh, a big chunk of time to do the cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be at least 200 trees in there. Yep. <clears throat> so. Okay. So it's all uh, on paper now, or it, on paper? I've got to start transferring it over to a data, sh uh, a spreadsheet type of thing. So. And then are we planning on getting back with um, uh, SRPC on it, or? Yeah, I think once we get it and we can identify just what areas, let them know, then okay. have them give us a price. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other old business that may come before the commission? Any idea, any status on the, um, the Hilltop Chevy parcel, whether anyone was interested in funding the easement? Um, I haven't had further communications with them regarding it. Um, after it had gone to city council, their survey team's working on it. We will probably inquire that as part of that process. I do have one thing, probably should have brought up a new business, but alas, at some point I will address it with you if you want now. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we have another survey ongoing as part of our master plan chapters updates. This one is related to the natural resource chapter and the land use chapter. I believe Anna sent out an email to you all on Friday. And for anyone listening at home too, hopefully you can all have taken it. If you haven't taken it and you need, um, I have flyers you can take home with you. You can share with 
your friends, neighbors, spouses, everyone. We want to get as much feedback about this information. It helps us draft the chapter. Um, so if you can help share the word and make sure to take the survey, we greatly appreciate getting feedback. So let me know if you want a flyer at the end of the evening. Where are we stand in that process? Um, they, as Stratford Regional Planning is continuing to work with staff, they're going to planning board for a workshop to talk about future land use and things like that. Um, we haven't seen any sort of draft chapter. Um, part of the conversation that they'll have with the planning board is to get kind of an idea on themes for the chapter. Um, this survey will help a lot too, getting feedback from the community, um, and then they'll be working on drafting the chapters, which we'd probably see, I think the grant goes sometime to November-ish, so I think we're gonna see something soon-ish, relatively. Do you know the date for that, for the planning meeting? Next week, on the 21st. 21st? 21st. Any other old business? Which the planning board meeting is obviously a public meeting, so anyone's welcome to attend. All right, treasurer's report. We will wait until next month for that. And does anyone have a motion for adjournment? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, there's a motion, a second and a half. Seconded by Kevin. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned at 7.02 p.m. Please turn your microphones off. <laughs>